Hey guys, it's Nicole Scott. So we're going to be going over how to insert someone's information into Credit Repair Cloud. So say um, someone doesn't have a credit reporting uh, service like Smart Credit or Identity IQ. They have something like Experian or they have MyFICO, but you still want to enter those accounts into Credit Repair Cloud. This video is going to show you how to insert those items into Credit Repair Cloud. If you did not have Credit Repair Cloud, you would just want to insert those same items that we're copying uh, into maybe Microsoft Word, or if you're using a Google Docs letter, you can do those two items as well. So Google Docs is free, but I always recommend if you're doing uh, credit repair and you cannot afford the software, invest in Microsoft Office. Microsoft Office is going to give you Microsoft Word and Microsoft 365. You can actually have the Word online and create your templates in your Microsoft Office. Um, so that way you can develop, you know, a letter library essentially in your Microsoft Office online. You can also save those letters to a Google Drive um, to keep them, you know, all online and organized for you. So let's get straight to it, guys. I'm going to go ahead and show you my screen. So when we're in Credit Repair Cloud, uh, we want to come over to, you know, go, go into your client's file and you're going to come over to dispute items. It is right after tab three. So tab three is your dispute wizard. And then next to tab three, you're going to see dispute items. We are going to go ahead and we're going to add a new record. So what you can do is you can actually um, put the screen side by side. Oftentimes I will do that. You just drag the screen over here to a new area and we can make this screen a little bit shorter like that so we can view two at the same time. So um, this is the client's um, Experian report and we're going to be using this to actually put in their account data. Now the client only has Experian, they do not have all three, so we are going to be using just the information from experience. So in this case, it wasn't too many things for the client, so we're not requiring them to have credit monitoring because really um, it's just these accounts that we're focused on and they're mainly late payments. And as you know, late payments are one of the hardest things to get corrected. All we can do is try, but of course there's no guarantee. So um, what we want to do is just go through the client's profile and when you you are logged into the Experian, you're going to go over to reports and scores, and then you're going to go to credit reports here. This is going to take you to the client's credit report. If they only have Experian, you'll only see Experian. If they have, this is the free version. If they have the paid version, you'll see all three of the reports. Now, the good thing with the free version of Experian, it is, it, it is a FICO 8 scoring model. So <clears throat> you can know what your actual real FICO scores are with Experian. Um, now we're looking for potentially negative items. We're looking for things that are in red. Typically with Credit Karma, Experian, uh, MyFICO, anything in red is a problem. Anything in green is good. So we're looking for the word negative, derogatory, collection, charge off, late payment, um, anything that is reporting red, that's how you're going to tell that something is negatively reporting. Now, of course, if you have the credit repair cloud, um, you'll be able to import everything from like identity IQ and smart credit, and it will automatically be able to tell whether or not it's negative, but um, it just won't be able to tell if like a balance, like a utilization is affecting them in a negative way. So the first account that we see here that we're going to add, um, this is from a uh, Chase. So JPMCB, that's um, JP Morgan Chase Bank. And what we're going to do is we're going to head over to uh, credit repair clown and I'm I'm just going to select all three bureaus because even though I don't know it's on all three bureaus typically Chase does report to all three bureaus and I know that um, there's a high likelihood that it's reporting to all three and it doesn't hurt even if it's not on um, all three they'll they'll let you know and say hey this account is actually not listed you know um, and until you know the client wants to get 
uh, credit monitoring, then of course, you know, there's really nothing that we can do. So this is our um, library of different um, creditors. If you don't see the creditor in there, you can easily add it. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and just add it. And um, just simple as that, if you wanted to add more details like the address, um, you certainly could. And it's very important to do so. All of the addresses for uh, different um, people that are reporting on your credit report should be listed on your credit report. Uh, typically, they are with Identity IQ and uh, Smart Credit. They have all of the different um, creditors listed on the credit report. Now, with Experian, I don't see that they have the different account. Um, or get different creditors information listed on their credit reports. So that's, you know, the thing about getting free reports, they don't always have all the information um, that you would need. So what we would want to do is we would want to look up their mailing address. So what I do is I go to Google and we're going to just type in mailing. Uh, this is for a card. Oh, so mailing address, JPMCB card mailing address. And we're going to find the mailing address for the Chase credit cards. Um, the Chase credit card payment address, that is probably a pretty good address to send it to because it looks like um, that is it. Uh, had a contact. Let's see if this is open or closed. So this is closed. You definitely want to look at the date as well. So um, I try not to use third-party websites because um, the, the information could be outdated. So typically I try to go to like the direct website of the credit card, the creditor, whoever you're writing the letter to or whoever you're answering the information to. Um, let's see. What is the mailing address? By mail, we're going to go ahead and use the address that they have listed on their website. There it is. And you want to just make sure that you have the um, city in the correct place so it all populates properly in your automation. If you're not using automation, you don't have to worry about that. But in our case, we are. And um, you're going to put in here, if you want to put any notes or anything, and you want to add it to the master contact list. So we're going to hit add. Now we're going to go back to the credit report. We're going to copy the account number that is listed on the credit report. That's all the account information that we have. We don't, if you have the full account number from the client, I recommend putting the full account number because many times they'll say that they cannot locate the account um, and they won't answer you. So you definitely want to try to, um, get the full account number if possible. If not, just use the one that is listed on the credit report. Now, uh, in this case, there are several late payments. And so we want to dispute all of the late payments and, um, dispute the charge off. It does say that there's a past due balance. And so we definitely want to, um, put the, information that we have based on the credit report. Um, now what we can do is we can actually copy that information and we can put it in the notes. Okay. Um, we can put the past due balance in here as well. So now we're just going to select our reason and instructions. So in this case, um, what we would want to do is say that the account, um, we don't have anything to go off of. So it's really hard when you don't have a three bureau report, but I'm just doing this as an example for you guys to see why it's important for your clients to have credit monitoring, because if they don't, this is what you have to do. And normally I don't do this, but I'm just um, doing it for the sake of the video. So you can put, um, the account is unknown. Um, I like the word unknown, please delete and confirm in writing. 
um, what we're going to do is we're going to submit that. You can actually add more details if you wanted to. Um, this is the same for all bureaus. So we're going to actually put in it's a negative status. We're going to put in the account number. We're going to put in uh, all of the information from the credit reporting uh, that we have. So date opened. Um, let's see, date, date open. Don't mind me. I just have my daughter in here while I'm, I'm helping you guys do this video. My daughter is two. So sometimes she, uh, she wants to come hang out while we're doing credit repair. So we got July 11th. And that's 2015, so make sure you get the date correct. Okay, um, the balance, you want to put that in there. Um, if you have any further information, you can put it in here. We're going to put um, account, let's see, account type is going to be a... Um, credit card and status is going to be closed and charge off. Well, actually the account status is closed and then what we can do is put um, the charge off is the payment status. That's the payment status. So any comments where again, you could just copy these uh, late payments over here. I like to copy and paste again a lot. So I'll just copy it and then um, I'll paste it in. And in this case, we only want to have like certain late payments in here. Other than that, then we're going to just hit the submit button. Okay, so now we're going to go on to our next account. Oh, so here's the contact information with experience. So normally I don't use it, but this is the contact information. Normally with any, every credit report, they should have the contact information listed on the credit report on how you can actually um, contact the creditor. So you definitely want to add all of the creditors to um, the furnishing uh, section here, which is where all of your creditor and furnisher uh, data information should be. So that way you can continue to use it for other people. So I'm actually going to put this in here uh, for Chase um, Bank credit card and then um, we'll put the address I again copy and paste is going to be your best friend there's a phone number in here so if you ever needed to call them you could um, I literally I don't like to type too much I copy and paste everything it makes my job a lot easier and it also cuts down on the amount of mistakes that you can potentially make so if you wanted to add any notes, you could. Um, we want to click Add to Master Contact List, so that will add it to our master credit report uh, or you know data furnisher list here. Um, okay, Add, and then we're going to put. We already have this in here as a dispute item. So if you go, if you hit the back button. There it is. That's what we've already put in, and it has it now going to all three of the bureaus listed as a negative status. Um, and if you wanted to adjust anything, you could just hit that little pencil. You could put, um, if you have any other information like um, the date of last active, like anything else that um, is going to be relative to this, then it's going to be important. The credit limit, we didn't put that in there. Um, but we can, you know, and again, if you have um, smart credit or identity IQ, uh, score IQ or any of the other um, credit reporting companies that are compatible with Credit Repair Cloud, then you do not have to manually enter this. Um, but, you know, if you are using something like um, Microsoft Word, you can literally copy all of this information right here. So you can you can go, okay, let me just, uh, let me go ahead and just copy all this information, copy. And then if you open up a, a Microsoft Word format here, 
you can potentially paste it as special. So right click, paste, unformatted. And now all of that information is on your Microsoft Word document. So at least you have the data in there. Okay, you, you got the data in there. So that's easy. Copy, paste, copy, paste. We're not going to save that, but that just shows you a, a creative way to get the data so you don't have to retype it all. Okay, copying and pasting. And again, you want to right click, space, uh, right click, and then paste special, and you want to paste it unformatted. So it, it will not paste the format. You don't need the format, you just need the information. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add the next item in here. Um, so we'll just make sure that we don't have any other derogatory. And again, um, if you don't know what to look for, just look at all the accounts right here. It says exceptional and it says closed. And you can see there's nothing wrong with this account. It's paid satisfactory. And typically if there are anything that is, if there's anything that is negative with account, it will show up red. Okay. Just like right here, red. So we're going to view all three of these accounts and you'll see three out of the four accounts that are listed here have red. So we're going to go ahead and just click on that arrow next to there and we're going to copy or not copy, but we're going to um, get all of this information in regards to the late payments because this client has 40 late payments on their mortgage and, um, we want to try to help them. And of course, you know, this has been something that has uh, been going on a long time with this client. So it's no guarantee that we'll be able to um, get this corrected for them. But worst case scenario, maybe we might be able to get some of the most recent ones corrected. And of course, you know, moving forward, um, it's just super important that the client pay their mortgage on time or, you know, try to get it um, to a loan amount that is more comfortable for them. So we're going to just select all bureaus because typically these loans report to all three bureaus. And in this case, I don't believe that we have this creditor's information in our database. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add them and we're just going to click add more detail. And, um, I use the contact information that is on the credit report. And if you, um, have a different contact information for maybe like a response that they sent you, of course, that's fine as well. But I just go off the information that was provided to us. So at least they get it. They can forward it to the right department as needed. Um, if there is a phone number you, that you, they have listed, include that because you never know if you need to call these people um, or provide the phone number for the client to call. Um, this is a mortgage. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that we click add to master contact list because we always want to do that. So now it's in there. We're going to grab the account number from this uh, account here. And this is going to be the reason. Um, the reason is are going to be um, late payment status is wrong. I have never been late on this, this account under the CARES Act. We're going to go that route first. So at least we can try to get some of the late payments that happened um, in 2020, 2021 possibly 2022 um we'll just do what we can not saying that we'll be able to correct all of them but um i have no late payments okay we can also say something like i have no late payments on this account i am paying this account as agreed um you know you could say please update or late payment status is inaccurate i have never been late please update to pay it as agreed Okay, let's just use that one so they can, we can try to go after all at the same time. And then um, what we want to do is put please update to pay, please update status to pay it as agreed. Um, I like to be very clear, short, and to the point. Please update status. And what we want to do is put please update payment status. Um, so I'm actually going to add a new instruction and put, um, please 
And sometimes you have to add new things here. It's, you're always going to be updating and figuring out, oh, wait, that there's a word missing that's very important. Because the way you word things is extremely important. So you need to be very clear and precise. Please update payment status to paid as agreed. I... Um, it, actually, I'm not even going to explain anything. Please update payment status from, um, actually, no, not from, just please update payment status to paid as agreed. Okay. Um, save explanation for future use. And then we're going to add more details again. Uh, same for all bureaus. We're going to click, uh, this is a negative status and we're going to put the account name and we're going to put, um, the account number. Oh, I'm sorry. We put the account number up top. I'm over here looking for the account number. So you can put it in the comments if you wanted to. Um, it's really not really necessary because it's up top. Um, but what we want to do is put, um, you know, all of the information in here. So all of these late payments, I'm just going to copy them because wouldn't it be a nightmare to have to type, type all those out? So guess what? Copy. And we're going to put, um, in the internal notes here. And if you wanted to use Microsoft word, what you would do is just right click, paste special, unformatted, boom. Now you have all that information pasted in there. Wonderful, right? You don't have to, you don't have to type it. Okay. You can still automate things. You don't have to have credit repair cloud. It does make it easier, of course, but you can do things for a while to, um, you know, get you by based on, you know, how many clients you have and stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and look at, um, some of the information here. So the date opened. Can put that in here. Payment status. Actually, I'm going to put the payment statuses from here into the payment status. Okay. And I'm not going to put anything else in there right now because um, in this case, we're just focusing on the late payment statuses and trying to get all of those corrected. So, um, and these have all of the late payments listed right here. So it's easy for you to copy and paste. You could even take a screenshot and put it on your letter to the credit bureaus if you wanted to. Um, so it all depends. Um, so this is actually an open account status. We're gonna put is open because it's important for us to know that this is an open account. So we don't necessarily want it removed from the client's profile, we just need to get the, um, the, um, late payment statuses updated. So we've got that account information in there. We're good. Um, now let's move on to the next negative item here. And you guys kind of get the idea. Now we want to just, you know, find the contact information at the bottom. Here it is. Uh, we can copy the name and that's how I do it for all of these is I just copy, 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 paste, 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 add a creditor in, boom. Okay. Let's grab the, uh, contact information here. It's probably not someone that we have cause I don't recognize the name that much and then copy the telephone number. All right. And then we're going to add it to the master contact list. And this is what kind of, um, account is this? This is a mortgage. So mortgage add. Now we're going to get the account number here. And again, we're just copying whatever account information we have on the credit report and pasting it on over. We're going to put uh, lay payment statuses inaccurate. And then we're going to, I have never been late. Um, let's see here. 
Um, we can actually put please update status to paid as agreed. It uh, looks like the last one we did did not save. Actually, please delete late payments reported. All payments were made on time. Please remove inaccurate reported late payments. Update to paid as agreed. We can use that. That's pretty spot on. We're going to click on add more details. Save for all bureaus. Um, typically, it is all bureaus. This is a negative account. And we're just going to put in the basic information here. So these are all the late payments that the client has made. And sometimes when there's so many late payments, it's easier to just get the account removed versus getting those updated because it's so many of them. And um, so, you know, we can only do so much. Uh, we can try and if it works, great. But if it doesn't work, hey, we've tried, you know, the thing with credit is you have to be consistent. You have to find um, cracks in the walls, cracks where you can wiggle in and say, oh, no, we're disputing this based on this information. Uh, you can dispute it with the creditor who reported it. So it's it, there's a lot of different ways to go about it. Account status, we're going to put this is actually closed. And the account type is a mortgage. Okay, last active status is going to be July 2017. Okay. And um, what, that's really all that we're worried about right now. We can put the uh, original loan. The limit was 190 And then submit. <clears throat> now that's added. If you want to make sure that it's added, just hit your back button. And now you can see that those items are added. So we're going to add um, everything else on this client's file just so we can make sure that you guys get it. You guys don't have any questions. Um, we're going through this. We're training. We're working hard to get people's credit fixed for them so they can have a better lifestyle. If they keep messing up after you help them, that's on them. But at least we can say, look, we're turning a new leaf moving forward. We want you to be responsible with your credit. We want you to make sure you pay your bills on time. We want to make sure that you keep your credit card balances low because that's what makes your credit score low, especially people that are messing their credit up over a $500 credit card when we can be getting $500,000 from our credit. You know, you can be buying properties that are going to make you have an abundance lifestyle um, but you want to mess it up over a $500 credit card. It doesn't make sense to me, guys. We have to have an abundance mindset and understand that if you manage your credit right, the possibilities are endless. And that's the wonderful thing about credit is, you know, you can leverage your credit to make money. And it's not just about um, personal credit, but business credit as well. So um, this is, what kind of account type is this? This is FHA mortgage. And then we're going to add this to the master list, add. And we're going to grab the account number that is listed on the credit report. We're going to put it over into the account number here. Um, we're going to dispute the reason. This reason is... Okay, so this, you know, we want to try to just probably get this entire account off because this was foreclosed on. And, um, you know, we want to try to find errors. Unfortunately, we don't have other credit reports to, to prove any errors that might be inaccurate from bureau to bureau. But um, we could just start with some basic disputes um, for now and try to do what we can um, in this case, we can just use, you can use fraudulent data. Um, you can use unknown. Um, let's try fraudulent data. We're just saying that the f account data is fraudulent. Fraud account data is listed. Please delete and confirm in writing. Okay. We're going to add more detail. We're going to choose, uh, same for all of the bureaus. And we're just going to enter in the information that we have here. Uh, again, very a long list of late payments and late payments are by far the hardest thing to get removed. So we're going to put the late payment status. We're going to put those in there. 
Um, original loan amount um, is going to be one six six nine two zero. Um, we're going to put the date, the status date. This is FHA mortgage uh, date last active. I don't know. Balance 2018. So status is going to be July 2018. We're just going to put that date in there. Um, date filed, account type, account status. This is going to be whatever is listed on the credit report. So I always go to the payment status right there. That's going to be um, your account. We can put this in, um, cause really the payment status should go under payment status, but I have the late payments listed right there because, um, that's where I can have them, you know, pop up. So I'm just going to put the details in the, in the, uh, the payment status in the account status, because that's pretty much what we need. And the account status is closed, but we can put that in, um, account type is closed. So sometimes you can adjust the information as needed, just so it populates. Closed FHA mortgage. Okay. That's very clear. And the date open, we could put that in there. So date open is going to be whatever is listed on the credit report. Again, you know, a lot of this is going to be data entry and that's why we want to try to automate things as much as possible because you see how long this is taking me to put in one person's um, credit information. It's almost not even worth it because, um, you know, they have so much um, data to enter they, you know, they made it seem like they only have a couple things, but at the end of the day, you know, you really want to try to clean up everything that's on someone's credit file that is affecting them in a negative manner. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and submit that. And, um, we're going to make sure that we have all of these accounts in here. So let me just close this and verify. So we've got four accounts in total, uh, four accounts in total. So we got everything on there. Um, we've got all the personal things that are current. So everything in here is green, no student loans. And then last but not least is uh, other accounts. So again, we have some red, which uh, means danger. So we want to put that in here. I don't know if it's on all three, but in this case, we have to assume. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the creditor in here. And in this case, it says uh, the attorney general, which is child support usually. Okay. And then we have the contact information here. Uh, again, if someone is listing something on your credit report, they must provide contact information. Typically when you're using identity and uh, IQ and smart credit, it's listed at the very bottom. And, but with, um, Experian, it's actually listed with each account. So sometimes there might not be a telephone number, which is okay, but they still have to provide you with an address. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and just add that to the master uh, list here. And we're going to put in account number that is listed on the credit profile. Again, even if um, the account profile has a bunch of X's whatever, select exactly how it is listed on the credit profile, copy and paste. If you have a printed file, um, you can go through and highlight everything and do it that way, but that's going to be a lot more work. I find this way to be much easier. If you're not using credit repair cloud, copy and paste all this stuff into Microsoft word unformatted. So at least you have the data. Okay. So this account status is open. So we're going to try to be careful with this. Again, this is child support. Um, so we're going to put unknown and we're going to put, please delete. We're going to add more details. Same for all bureaus. This is a negative account. This is going to be child support. 
Okay. Um, we put in the information that we know. So date opened. Date opened is going to be whatever date is listed on the credit profile. Okay. Um, uh, what is the status? We're going to copy that. And again, this is payment status. Um, status date. Hmm. That's really old, so um, we're going to just put that in here. Uh, monthly payment, whatever is listed on there. If they have any late payments, list them. Um, so we're going to put comments, late payments. Okay, um, what else do we have to put here? Um, the balance, we could put on theirs, whatever the credit report says. Uh, status, we definitely want to put open. Account type is going to be um, child support. Um, okay, I think that's about it that we would need for this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and submit that and move on to the next item. Okay, so this is the next item here. We're going to just copy. And again, if you don't rec recognize um, the creditor, you can always check and see, start typing it in, and it'll come down to the list here where you have everything. Um, we actually do have this one in here, but there's multiple addresses. So what we're going to do is just verify the address that is on this one and start typing in the uh, name and you can see it. We have so many different vendors in here. It's like, whoa. Okay, so what's the address? 1307. So they have two addresses. A lot of these, a lot of places you'll notice have multiple addresses. So we already have this one in here, which makes it a little bit easier. And that makes it easier when you're adding stuff in that are like from places that show up on credit reports all the time, like um, portfolio, LVN funding, a lot of these, you know, popular collection places. Um, you know, we definitely want to keep those in there because you're going to see those a lot. Um, I typically use the same fraud account data, unknown, um, unauthorized, um, you know, whatever, please. Uh, we're just going to put, um, this account is inaccurate. I'm seeking litigation. Please delete. We can put that. Um, we can request method of verification. That's a good one. Um, Let's go ahead and do that because it does say that it's already been disputed in the past, but um, typically they don't have the documents to support it. So this is going to be negative. And we're going to put uh, all of the information in here that we have. Okay, late payment. Late payment status. Um, we're going to put late payment. Uh huh. Late payment status. Okay, and then we're going to put the status charge off. Status account status is charge off. 
monthly payment. Uh, or amount past due, I should say. Past due, original, a loan amount. Um, it's also known as high balance because that's the highest balance. Um, you can also put that because I don't see where it will limit. I guess you could say it's not really a limit. It's a loan amount. They don't really have loan amounts. So you can like alter some of this information because this all means the same thing. Essentially, um, date opened January 14th, uh, 2020. Uh, account type, it's going to be a lease. Um, what else we got? Status, date. Let's see if they have a date of last activity. Balance on July 31, 2020. So um, date of last activity would be July of 2020. Okay, so that looks about like everything that we have that's most important. Um, this is closed. The account status is closed. So um, put closed, charge off. And we're going to go ahead and hit submit. And now it's on there. Um, make sure that we have everything on here. So in total, looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six accounts that are affecting this client in a negative manner. So you just want to go through and make sure you have all six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we got all six added to the client's file. So now it's just a matter of going through and disputing all of those items. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the dispute wizard. And again, if you're just using Microsoft Word, just use some of these same concepts for Microsoft Word or for Google Docs, because that's going to be the way that you're, you're generating everything. And you can literally just save letters in there and just um, insert the information into your letters. Okay. Um, but in the credit repair cloud, we're going to go ahead and hit create letters round two. Um, and then you'll be able to dispute all of the information in here. Now with these situations, uh, what we can do is we could put the late payments, on one letter and other accounts on another letter. So in this case, we're going to start with the late payments. We're going to go select a letter from the library mode, go into credit bureau letters. We're going to select um, our letters that we have at the top. I always put all of our most popular letters as A1. So they pop up at the top of the screen here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, late payment status under the CARES Act. We're going to try that one first and see if it works. Um, because this client has so many late payments, it's hard to say that it was just under CARES Act. Um, And in seeing these, it automatically populates the client's information. So that way it's in there. 
don't use the e-signature at the bottom just type in the client's name because that's going to be easiest um, I typically I don't even keep in the numbers right there I just have them listed because we want to be less like credit repair cloud and more like thinking outside of the box like how can we be different to where it doesn't seem like it's coming from credit repair cloud because the credit bureaus are very aware of the formatting for um, credit repair cloud so we have to just be a little bit different and create custom letters so that way you can save your custom letters in the letter library but I don't recommend using the, the letters that are already in there unless you've reformatted them reworded them a little bit they can say the same thing you just got to reword them and you can use spinbot.com to do that or any other word translator to to reword anything so this is going to be late payment round one and late save now those are done hit your back button um, what we're going to do is hit this same dispute this same information to the creditor who's reporting it so we're going to select creditor letters and we're going to put um, the acts cares act goodwill letter that we have in here and then it will generate letters to the account information that is listed here so we're going to save late payment to creditor and this is going to be a creditor letter save hit my back button i'm going to exit out of these two areas go back to credit bureau i'm going to add in some new items now everything that's in orange is currently under dispute because we already did the letters um, this is an unknown account. This is unknown. This is, this is, so we can use unknown and fraud account data for the same um, letter essentially. So I don't recommend adding more than like five items per letter, but you can do multiple letters. So um, you can do, you know, five items, but then you can do like 20 different letters and, you know, mail them out at the same time or around the same time so that way everything gets done faster uh, credit bureau letters we are going to select um, you can use a debt validation you can use a prove it letter which is basically them you challenging them on the information that they're uh, listed here um, i am going to use in this case i'm actually going to use um, a prove it letter and because I know this client has already disputed this stuff and I'm saying I'm, I'm in total disagreement with your reasonable investigation um, and I'm requesting in here there always has to be a reason and instruction please delete um, so reason and instruction And notice how I've already included the um, reinvestigation right here per FCRA 611. That is uh, 15 USC 1681I, which um, is the procedure in case of disputed accuracy and um, basically is the law saying where anything on your credit report has to be 100% accurate. And they do have to perform a reasonable investigation to confirm the accuracy of the data reporting. So that's really uh, what we're doing here. And um, we're going to go ahead and save. Actually, we want to just double check all three letters, make sure everything populated correctly. Um, we're going to put please delete slash please delete because there's no instruction. And again, every time you're disputing something, you want to have um, your reason as to why, why you're disputing it and what you want done about it why 
can be whatever reason why you're disputing it. You can say it's unknown. You can say it's fraud data. You can say it's identity theft. You can say, um, you know, it's not authorized. You can say it's inaccurate. You can say it's, um, you know, it's uh, outdated. It's, you know, old. It shouldn't be on your credit report. You need to give a reason why you are disputing it, whether it's fraud account data, unknown, uh, unknown info, please delete But just give a reason why you're disputing it and an instruction on what you want done about it. Because if you don't instruct them, they don't know what to do. Um, so this is disputes. We just put round one. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just put fraud account data. Save. We're gonna hit the back button and now we're gonna um, switch over to the creditor. So from credit bureau to creditor and we're gonna go ahead and dispute it, creditor letters. And um, actually I am going to do a debt validation for um, these. And this can be really used for anything, whether it's collection company or whoever. Um, it's just a formal notice that the alleged debt being listed on the consumer report is denied and disputed. And um, a, a long uh, old letter for that. But remember how we put in all of the um, company information so it will all populate on the letters here. So that's why it's really easy to use Credit Repair Cloud because now everything populated, the account number, the addresses, you just want to go through and make sure that everything looks good. Um, but everything's there going to the creditor. So now we're just going to save and just put uh, round one. And these are creditor uh, letters. And then we're going to put um, fraud data and then save. And sometimes we don't necessarily have the proof that the data is inaccurate um, because if you don't have the three bureaus, you can't necessarily prove it. However, I'm sure that there's something wrong with it. And once we can get more information from the creditor, we might be able to find um, you know, some information that doesn't match up. So we're gonna go ahead and exit out of all of those. And that's it. That's everything that we need to dispute on this client's file. You always want to go through and make sure everything is in orange, everything is in dispute. So that way um, you can ensure that the client's letters have been completed. Uh, one way to confirm that is going to your little print button up here and you'll be able to see all of the client's letters in the batch print. Now uh, you can print the letters out for your clients or you can um, basically create a PDF and send it to your clients for them to print and mail off. So if you're, um, you know, charging someone a very low fee, you can definitely uh, save on costs with mailing and, you know, certified mail if the client wants it by selecting all of the documents for this particular client. So in this case, you would just select the letters for that client and then you would go ahead and you would print the selected uh, letters here. So you would go ahead and just print, print selected letters and you can print that and save it to a PDF and then email that PDF file to your client for them to print out. And when you um, have everything uploaded into Credit Repair Cloud, each letter will in fact include a copy of the proof address or, or proof document. So proof of address, social security card, identification card, all of those items will be attached with every letter. Um, when you print, it'll give you the option right here. It says all letters. Um, it says right here, if you want to include a photo ID, proof of address, documents with round one letters only or all letters. I say all letters because um, you definitely want to keep on sending them the documents because um, credit bureaus don't keep good records. So 
that's it. That's all folks. I hope you find this. I hope you found this video helpful to you. I know sometimes it can be challenging dealing with new software setups when you want to become um, a credit repair business. But again, my name is Nicole Scott. Thank you for tuning in guys and make sure that you watch the next video.